Hello everybody, welcome back for another video, hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed. There's always so much stuff happening in the space, so let's go over it and without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, the last day or two has been quite weird about um, pretty much everything, but basically people talking about ways to acquire more Bitcoin. I've seen it in podcasts, I've seen it on YouTube videos, I've seen it in a lot of articles, a lot of things that people are saying as far as what they would do or what they feel needs to be done to be able to acquire more Bitcoin. I think that I, I, I don't think it was Michael Saylor. It was, it, it was someone, you know, with that level of prestige, air quoting, uh, one of the billionaires in the space who recently said on, rather, it, it was in a video that was posted then on Twitter, where basically he was saying, uh, do whatever you can to buy more Bitcoin, you know, sell your house and sell your so-and-so. And people in the comments were like, that seems a little irresponsible to be telling people that, but I, I'm hearing it echoed over and over. That is not financial advice. I'm just kind of letting you understand that for some reason. Uh, they're all kind of saying the exact same thing. The CEO of Kraken uh, recently said, I don't even think I can even read that out to be completely honest with you, uh, that he was, uh, he's probably joking, but he was uh, searching around on the interwebs <clears throat> as how to uh, sell something of his uh, to be able to uh, buy more Bitcoin. Uh, the Miami mayor, who is constantly in the news over and over, especially after yesterday, um, and even the day before that he was also in the news, uh, also said to buy the dip. It's, it's, it's really, you know, uh, it says Bitcoin is pricing. Is it the right opportunity to get in? There's a lot of news like this. Uh, and a lot of people, it's not even just on Bloomberg. Uh, the discussion currently is, is that Bitcoin is heavily discounted and therefore people should be buying it. Uh, but it's just kind of happening all at the exact same time. I'm not sure if it's coordinated in some sort of way, but just uh, to bring you that news. There were a lot of other tabs as well, but I thought it would be a bit redundant to have, you know, 12 of the exact same thing. So that's kind of the uh, sh should you buy the dip news. I don't know why I air quoted that. That was an exact uh, sentence. But anyway, that's the uh, buy the dip news, if you will, because it's all over the place and they won't stop talking about it. And it's getting a little odd. It, it, Sometimes it, it, it feels like, at least to me, that they know something that we don't know. But anyway, that's the that news. And let's move on. Uh, Jack Dorsey, for those of you who do not know, and you must know at this point if you've been watching the channel for anything over than six months, uh, Jack Dorsey loves Bitcoin. Not likes it. Like I, he, he thinks that it is going to be the actual thing that brings us into a new uh, utopia. <clears throat> Payments company Square is apparently weighing the launch of a hardware Bitcoin wallet. CEO Jack Dorsey said on Tuesday or Twitter today, uh, says Square is considering making a hardware wallet for Bitcoin. If we do, we would build it entirely in the open from software to hardware design and in collaboration with the community. So the, the, the popularity of Bitcoin began to like before there was Tesla announcing that they were in the space. It was Square who really put their foot forward and was like, no, like we've liked Bitcoin for a very long time. We've been accumulating it, or rather so the, the theory goes. We know that Jack Dorsey allegedly also has tons of Bitcoin as well. No one knows the exact amount. I assume that if Square actually does make a hardware wallet, they would probably be one of the largest hardware wallets on the planet. Uh, just, you know, just based on simple... Uh, logic. So I'm pretty sure this is going to happen. I'm pretty sure they kind of threw it out there to see how people would react, <clears throat> especially if they can price it competitively enough. This is going to be the the largest hardware wallet that we actually have in the space. The other news is where was it? There's a lot of Jack Dorsey news. Uh, Jack Dorsey said that he he said I would leave Square and Twitter for Bitcoin if it needed me more. Uh, he is ready and willing, and I think even more so able. Uh, to throw his entire weight simply behind Bitcoin to continue its development. Um, I don't think he's going to be stopping anytime soon. I, I think people really underestimate exactly how... I was going to say forward-thinking, but that's not the the the, the term. How, how, how really how much into Bitcoin that he is. There, there, there are very few people in the space who I think are legitimately... Uh, here, if you get what I'm saying, I, I think a huge portion of the people tend to be bros... You understand what I'm saying? Uh, kind of this like, yeah, we're going to get rich. We're going to buy Lambos. Uh, we're going to save the world. But they don't actually understand what that inherently constitutes to. Not saying that even Jack Dorsey's trying to save the world. But I think he's one of the most 
genuine people as far as like his love of Bitcoin and what he thinks it can do for the world, if you want to put it that way. The the, the other person, if you were wondering, is uh, Antonopoulos and Vitalik Buterin. Vitalik Buterin has really um, changed. I've changed my view on him. Not that I thought he was a bad person by any means in any you know kind of way. Uh, but I, I've been watching interviews with him and the things that he says and the things that he's actually doing, like giving away billions of dollars uh, when he he when he he could have just used that money for himself uh, for other things. It's kind of uh, nice if you want to say that. And the last of the Jack Dorsey news, um, Square Inc., a crypto friendly mobile payments company, is planning to invest five million dollars in a solar powered Bitcoin mining facility for Blockstream mining. Offering further insight into Jack Dorsey's continued support for blockchain infrastructure, Chris Cook, Blockstream's chief information officer, announced the collaborative partnership on Saturday, where he outlined plans to build the open source mining facility at one of Blockstream's United States. Yeah, because they're not doing it in, in, in China anymore. Together, we plan to provide public transparency by sharing their project, project economics and knowledge we've gained from building a Bitcoin mine powered by renewable Energy. This is clearly uh, working off the back of the entire discussion that everyone has been having as, you know, Bitcoin uses too much electricity and therefore yada, yada, yada. Uh, but sure, by all means, there the, the, the other topic that seems to be a really big thing right now is that people say that Bitcoin is actually moving us into a more renewable energy world because if Bitcoin continues to consume more electricity therefore we will have to find ways to be able to deal with it and the way of dealing with it is finding new innovative ways to make renewable energy sources so that's all the jack dorsey news uh, there was a lot over the weekend I, th I think i even missed one or two stories we'll see where this all goes we know that bitcoin's going to be big but I, I i think they're working on more of the 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 infrastructure backside of it if you will anyway that's all the Bitcoin Dorsey news. Let's move on. Next up in... Sure, why not? The South Korean government finally appears to be ready to move uh, to address criticism regarding its inertia over the formation of new crypto regulation. And to do so, it appears to have begun communicating directly with exchanges it believes stand a chance of meeting regulatory guidelines in time for a deadline in September of this year. South Korea used to be one of the, the, the friendliest places within the cryptocurrency market, but around the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018, that completely changed uh, when what I think, personally, were coordinated attacks. Uh, China was all, uh, no, Japan was also very friendly as well to the cryptocurrency space, but there were uh, crypto exchange hacks that happened uh, in South Korea and in Japan, and it kind of pulled back any rope that they gave their citizens as far as like a, you know, a good crypto regulation. Once again, I, I think that those hacks were completely coordinated because they only came like as the cryptocurrency market was like really, really rising. And then the government was able to say, oh, no, someone stole something. So we have to get into the market to make sure that we are, uh, what's the word, um, protecting investors. But I, I, I rolled my eyes uh, just simply because I, I believe that was fake. So then we got news that South Korea was thinking of uh, banning Bitcoin as well, which I told you all would not happen. No place is going to actually ban Bitcoin. They're simply going to try and regulate it into the ground as best they can. But it's inevitable at this point that Bitcoin is definitely going to take over. Crypto trading platforms have until the 24th of September to officially register with the Regulatory Financial Services Commission, FSC, establish anonymity free, so meaning they have to know who you are, banking for their clients on a Contractual basis with domestic banks put anti-money laundering protocols in place and gain information security management system ISMS certification if they want to continue trading. Basically, they have to become exactly like a bank. They, 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 they want no free trade, no free movement of crypto if they can have anything to do with it. Uh, this is going to be a very hard struggle for a lot of governments in the next couple of years. Uh, just simply... Uh, coming to terms with the fact that they will not have absolute control and power over this market. Once again, not a fist in the air kind of moment. Uh, it's just complete logic. The amount of infrastructure that's being built around the cryptocurrency space is not being built around cryptocurrency exchanges. You have cryptocurrency exchanges and governments working together to build up cryptocurrency exchanges. But the 80% of the work happening behind the scenes are other governments around the world 
we're getting into it. You have a lot of the development of the the DeFi space, which is the the people forget that the word decentralized is in there, and that is a very big portion of it. Is that no one will be able to control these protocols. It will be done by the community for the community, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's gonna that's we 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 had news before from the SEC that they don't care for the DeFi space because they can't control it, and there's no one th- th- there's no one's door who they can explicitly knock on and say, hey, stop what you're doing. Same exact thing with the um. What other spaces are there? Oh my gosh, I can't remember the, any, any of the other ones. The the decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges are also extremely huge, and they're only going to get larger. We had news from Binance as well before. If you can find that article from Chang Peng Cao, he also said that he plans on transitioning Binance into a, a type of decentralized exchange as well, where there's no real person in control. So you can't really tell people what they can and can't do on the on these platforms. So uh, there will be, you know, a, a, a explicitly. When we have these regulations on top of cryptocurrency exchanges, it will allow a lot more people to feel more comfortable with the space. And there will still be a huge portion of the planet who are going to be on cryptocurrency exchanges because they're used to people uh, custodying their money, same as with the bank account. But the the movement will continue to grow. And we're going to hear a lot of stuff. We will definitely hear a lot over the next couple of years about... uh, AML, KYC, trying to be put on decentralized exchange and all these other things, but they the the world is changing quite rapidly, and uh, regulators definitely know this, so they're trying to find a way to either scare people out of the market or let them know that they should only be using uh, regulated exchanges, but that's not how the world works. Anyway, so the news basically being is that they're, they're, they're making regulations, and I guess a, a full... What do you want to call it? Regulatory rollout will happen on the 24th of September, uh, basically solidifying that crypto is legal and trading crypto within the country is also legal if you're using one of these cryptocurrency exchanges. So good luck to them. Let's move on. Um, also, in, in very popular news, uh, just because of speculation, uh, JP Morgan Chase is apparently looking to hire 34 people who are experts in the cryptocurrency space, namely in the uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum way. JP Morgan Chase, I haven't had it in the news the last couple of weeks. Uh, they Every time that Bitcoin's price has fallen down a tiny bit, JP Morgan Chase has made sure to release some some, some type of an article basically saying... Bitcoin's price is going to drop. Is 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 there further pain coming? Something along the lines of those. Uh, and and I made sure to share an article with all of you. Uh, this was weeks, months ago at this point. Uh, when I, I think Bitcoin had gone from I don't remember the exact number. They 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 I, I can't remember at all. They released an article basically stating that uh, Bitcoin would never rise above uh, I think thirty thousand again or something like that. And then I think two weeks later it was at thirty two thousand, thirty eight thousand, and forty five thousand, and kept on going up higher. So they they released these things uh, because I myself believe uh, that they are part of the manipulation gang. Uh, JP Morgan Chase has been accused of manipulating the silver market, the gold market, the bond market, uh, stocks, and a number of other things over the course of the last 15 to 20 years. So uh, I, I, I think it's not too far-fetched to assume that JP Morgan would be doing anything that they can uh, to be able to lower the prices of, of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency assets so that they can accumulate more. Uh, especially when every single time that they're in the news, it's always a... It's usually, it's usually Jamie Dimon saying something negative about Bitcoin. When at the same exact time, you're not hiring 34 or ha- having 34 job openings because, you know, you want to be against this space. Anyway, you understand what I'm saying. So um, every single bank is into crypto in some sort of way right now. Uh, it's a real shame that they can't announce these things, but the bank always looks after the bank first. And that's just kind of how things are. Anyway. That's the JP Morgan Chase news. It's abundantly clear that they've been into crypto for a very long time. I would love to. I would love, I would love, I would love, I would love, I would love to see exactly how much Bitcoin they have and how much the, uh, what do you call it? How much the other bankers who are working there have because you know that they've also been accumulating as well. It's no longer a, a question. It's definitely that they are, but it's a matter of uh, when did they start buying, even better, and how much uh, Bitcoin do they actually hold? Anyway, that's the JP Morgan Chase news. And let's move on. Next up, uh, Vitalik Buterin was re- was recently interviewed, and I and I thought it was one of the 
most interesting things in the entire world. This is what I was talking about. I'm, I'm pretty sure I said it in this video earlier. I think he's such a fascinating person, and he's very uh, clever in what he does. Um, during the interview, a lot of people were, I mean, shocked for whatever reason. Uh, he basically announced that years ago, years, 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 years ago, when he was, you know, not just getting into the market, he was looking to, you know, where should I start allocating money and stuff like that? And he mentioned that he called his mother after he did it, and he invested twenty five thousand dollars into Doge. And it was like, okay, we'll see where it's going to go. Keeping in mind that years ago, and now for 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 complete context, uh, there was a point where you were able to, if you put a thousand dollars into Doge you were able to get about a, a, a good million Doge somewhere around there. So he, he threw 25000 into it, and he said around the time that it went to, I think, s f $0.07 cents or something like that, he sold half because he was like, you know, I don't think the train can really last much longer. The price fell down to $0.04, cents and he was like, okay, you know, I did a pretty good job. Uh, and, and then the price, he said he looked at the price again, and it was at $0.10 cents and then $0.11 cents to $0.15, cents and he's like, okay, well, I sold clearly a bit too early. The the discussion for him was it was like a fifteen minute interview it was basically uh, discussing uh, if he liked Shiba Inu, uh, and he was like, well, you know, they gave it to me. Many other projects have done the exact same thing, but he was really quite shocked that they <laughs> that the the Shiba Inu people gave him half of the supply, and it was basically like I don't want to have that much power, so he donated I think a couple hundred million or a billion dollars. I, I don't know. It was, it was some huge significant amount. Uh, to the um, to these relief funds, if you know the current world situation, uh, and then he burned all the rest of it. So that was kind of the discussion, and a lot of people are um, I think a bit annoyed because he doesn't have as much Doge as they think he should. But this is also kind of weird because th 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 this has happened before in the past, where uh, prominent people in the cryptocurrency space have announced what coins they hold. They'll say, "I own Bitcoin. I own Ether." I own some Litecoin, and you know maybe that's about it. And people are like, why don't you own any XRP? Why don't you own any Dogecoin? Have you not seen Chainlink? And they kind of get really annoyed when these prominent people don't hold the coins that they want them to hold. So I thought this was very fascinating because you know holdings of a mere twenty-five Doge surprises his fans. Why? 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 What? What made you think that Vitalik Buterin should hold hundreds of millions of them? He 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 he, he threw. He said he threw 25000 into a whole bunch of different projects just to kind of see like where the coins would land and got pretty shocked when he made a lot of money, pulled it out of it. I assume this man owns mega mansions and stuff like that, so that's why his money went there. Anyway, I, I thought that was fascinating. Let's move on. Um, and to finish things off, in something that's significant but people will not find significant because so many significant things are happening on the planet right now, regarding cryptocurrencies and very few people are paying attention. Russia has reportedly announced that US dollar assets will be removed from its national wealth fund as US sanctions on Moscow intensify. The fund which currently totals around 600 billion dollars forms part of Russia's gold and currency reserves. Russia's finance minister Anton Siluanov Announced at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum on Thursday that dollar assets will be removed from the National Wealth Fund NWF altogether as Washington continues to impose sanctions on Moscow. According to a translation by Reuters, he said, Like the central bank, we have decided to reduce investments of the NFW in dollar assets. The finance minister revealed that the changes will happen next month. Uh, and the fund will completely then be just the euro, the yuan, gold, Japanese yen, and the British pound. Russia is one of the countries that has been steadily, rapidly moving away from the U.S. dollar over the course of the last couple of years. I know that a lot of people have forgotten that a lot of these news stories took place. For those of you who were not here, here's some of the news that we had. This is from, I, I think, 2018 or 2019. It says two years ago, but a lot of these articles kind of round up or round down, if that makes any sense. So if it's like, uh, two years and 11 months. It'll still say two years on the article. It says, Russia plans to ditch U.S. dollar for Bitcoin. This was said by a university professor, a Russian university lecturer with ties to the government, says the Kremlin will soon begin investing massively in Bitcoin as a way of avoiding U.S. sanctions, a move that could happen in a matter of weeks. We kept on getting news like this over and over and over. 
And I made sure to 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 mention to people how significant this was. Uh, but a lot of people did not believe that this was taking place because we did not explicitly have uh, Russia get on TV and say that they were going to be investing in Bitcoin. Uh, my how times have changed. We also had this one as well. Uh, it says Russian economist uh, Vladaski Ginko is out with another bold claim. This time he says that companies and wealthy individuals in Russia have purchased 1.8 million Bitcoin. And that was $8.6 billion worth of Bitcoin once again two years ago. Um, what was the other news that we also had from Russia as well? I, I, I don't remember the, the exact thing. I don't know why I'm holding my stomach as well as, as I said that. But um, it's fairly evident where all of this is going. I, I think a lot of the major buying is definitely taking place by these institutions and, and by these countries. Uh, don't forget the news that we had. Was it Norway? No, it wasn't Norway. It was another country that was like, mm, it was next to Russia. I'm not going to get it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the map in my head and I, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, where we basically found out that I think out of the 367 members of parliament that they had, I think 15 of them alone had over a billion dollars worth of crypto because they were required to uh, announce their cryptocurrency holding. So just understand that this is all taking place. Uh, we are rapidly rapidly moving to a world where the US dollar will have no dominance. And I mean, it's going to take about a good 10 to 15 years until we finally get there. But yeah, it's clear that all these countries have been purchasing Bitcoin, have cryptocurrency mining rigs, have invested in some sort of way. People, um, and, and it's not your fault. People don't usually understand exactly how money moves around, how easy it is to hide money or to have shell companies and all these other things. A lot of people think that things happen simply on the surface and nowhere else. Not really understanding that, you know, they can most certainly buy $8.6 billion worth of Bitcoin and not have to go on television to tell you. Like, there is no transparency when it comes to things like this. So, anyway, yeah, that's all that news. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Arachno Dave, almost said Archarno, and I don't know why, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambroski, The Dealer's Den, Red Plump Tomato, Umnu, Wishniki, The Letter M, Stefan Dirks, Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z-Way Lay, Crypto Black Sheep, AJ Cut 5, Speedy 655, and Carlos Was Like, Mobarazzi, Jojo Shasho, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolet, Lauren De Silva, Quarterbitty, Bare Bones Mining, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Patron Noster, Conan, No Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banana, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Anima Reader, Abibiophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Mohan Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jarrett Sider, Wise Night Owl, 242 to the World, Bank, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Damien Setsuna, Richie Richard Third, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mann, Jalavori, Jim Gardner, Jamie Fox, Minton Coins, Miller, His Chest, Everyday, and Kalskip's Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Boy to Make Boat Face, Anytime Fitness, Moss Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger and Machonisa, all crypto with Lionel, Crayla and Michelle, you are Ellen Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel who clicked the little join button below. Thank you to everyone who left a like, who left a comment, who is still listening to me talking about the cryptocurrency market. At the moment, Bitcoin is down by 3.5%. The the majority of the cryptocurrency market is in red right now. Can't really give you a reason. There doesn't appear to be one. There were some articles floating around basically discussing that the movements are happening because of whales and they're trying to accumulate as much as possible. And it's very easy for them to be able to move the market in certain coordinated ways. And it does simply make a lot of sense. We always have the same exact dips over and over and over and over. Because uh, once Bitcoin falls, everything else is required, I guess, in some sort of way to actually follow it. But there are some coins that you can see are trying to move back up right now. I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.